<laughs> Alex. My name is Alex Davis and I'm the education manager at Third Piece. Originally, I'm from Hollis, New Hampshire, which is a little farm town just outside of Nashua. Uh, you know, we're known for apple farming. We're known for uh, the, our annual strawberry festival. Hollis, New Hampshire is where I grew up. <laughs> But now I'd identify as a person from Boston. <laughs> I'd say I wake up later than my coworkers and I get to work after most of my coworkers. But uh, my main responsibility is to make sure that our customers are knitting, to make sure that they are successfully uh, working through their third piece projects and helping them figure out what their next educational challenge might be and helping them work with our yarns and our patterns. So I think every day I start by checking my emails, right? Uh, and often in my emails there are pattern questions or technique questions. So I would work to identify which one of our YouTube videos best answers those questions, or perhaps I make a new video for a customer uh, to help answer their question, or I jump on a FaceTime or Zoom call to help them out. Uh, and usually at the end of my day, I'm probably teaching a class, leading a knit along, or uh, supporting one of our social knit events uh, uh, over Zoom. Oh my gosh, um, so I, I, I did the babysitting thing. I did, uh, I did help out a real estate agent and she paid me under the table. I would say my first like real job that the government knew about <laughs> uh, where like taxes were taken out was uh, I worked at a public library, which is a very um, acronistic environment for me because uh, you think of a library as a very quiet, calm place and that's not often the energy I'm bringing to a situation. But my first job in high school was at a library. I shelved books and I helped pair people with books and uh, yeah, I really liked that job. That was a fun, that was a fun gig. Oh my gosh. Um, knitting is something that I started, knitting is something I started doing in high school and Originally, I started doing it because I had a really good friend who would knit with her mom. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. I want to learn how to do that. And it unexpectedly became a really important part of my life in terms of the way I managed my ADHD, the way I managed my anxiety, the way I felt comfortable in public places, the way I felt comfortable um, it, 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 the way I felt like I had control over my body and my emotions and it became a really meditative and calming thing uh, and it also became a way for me to uh, share with others so knitting a part of my knitting practice I feel like has always been social so it makes a lot of sense that I've ended up teaching it uh, I was taught to knit by a contingency very strong, wonderful women in my life. So I think the first person, my first knitting teacher was my best friend, Catherine, who still remains one of my good friends and is now a, a third piece customer herself. Uh, and she and her mother would knit. Uh, we would go out and we'd like do teenage things. And then when we would get back to her house, uh, my curfew was midnight. So I would just kind of like hang out at her house until she lived 10 minutes away from me. So I'd wait until 11.50 to drive home. Uh, and whenever I would end up back at her house, her and her mother would like sit and start knitting at night. And you know, we'd drink tea and they would knit and we'd watch movies. And I was like, oh, I wanna be doing something right now too. I wanna be knitting. So they both taught me how to knit. Then when I was in school, I had a really lovely uh, music teacher who was also a knitter and saw me knitting and uh, she became a, a great helper whenever I needed support or I'd drop a stitch or I had a question. So I would, you know, run off to her. She would help me fix my knitting and then she'd write me a pass so that I wouldn't be marked late to my next class. Uh, perseverance. Just keep going. Um, to, to just keep knitting. To just keep moving forward into the next project. Um, Celebrate when you finish something, right? Like celebrate the accomplishments when you tackle a new garment or when you uh, take on a new pattern stitch or you work on a, a, a small needle for the first time or a giant needle for the first time. I think those are important things to remember that, and you can mark those things and celebrate those things. But I think the only way you're gonna get better is by making things and by pushing forward and continuing to knit. Um, 
and just knowing that eventually you'll have an archive of your process. My other piece of advice is not to always have a, like a simple project on the side that you can go to when you get frustrated. I don't really think my friends and family would describe me. Um, I think they would describe me as intolerable. <laughs> I think I bring a lot of energy to a situation and I think uh, one of the first ways that I often connect with new people in my life is through positive energetic exchanges. I like to learn about people. I like to ask a lot of questions <laughs> to people. So I think I'd probably be described as energetic and curious. <laughs> um, I'm always trying to learn new things and, and take on new challenges. So I often see new people in my life as opportunities to uh, create new relationships, but also to learn new things from them. So I, I often worry that I ask too many questions <laughs> of people, but um, yeah, I think, I, I think I'd be described as energetic and curious. Uh, lightning round. Kate, Kate, Kate is a meerkat, okay? So Kate pops out of the ground whenever you need anything. So Kate is like always underground, scurrying around, making things happen. And then when there's a moment where I'm like, ah, I throw my arms up, Kate just like meerkats and like pops up. And it's like, I got you covered. And she has a solution to the problem. So I would say Kate is a meerkat. Maddie, um, Maddie is a butterfly. Maddie is um, like beautiful and ethereal and present in a way, but also uh, beyond that aesthetic, she's pollinating, you know what I mean? She's doing work. She is helping the economy of third piece and she is really, uh, but she's doing it in a way that is not self-involved and she's doing it in a way that like, she's not asking for anything in return, you know? She's just like making beautiful things happen around her. Haley, huh, Haley is, so, oh gosh, the, Haley is truly a Gemini in the sense that she has so many, but she's not like a, a Gemini in the sense that like there's a good and a bad duality, like binary. Haley is so adaptable to any situation. So Haley is like the uh, mystique, the X, the X man mystique. Like Haley is capable of being present and adaptable to any situation. She always brings her best self forward and she always um, kind of knows what's needed, not just in a workflow sense of things, but energetically, emotionally, um, as a friend. Uh, Haley's very attuned. I love animal videos where you see like a really scary animal being really loving. So I feel like a lion who's like cuddling its owner is Haley where you're just like, Haley could at any moment bite your head off if she wanted to, but she is in control. So she's not going to bite your head off, she's gonna cuddle you. Haley is like a caring lioness. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Kristen, <laughs> I've been giving everybody an animal, so I need to give you an animal. Um, you carry yourself in a very, I wanna say giraffe. I'm getting giraffe right now. Uh, you carry yourself in a very elegant way, but you are always surveying an entire situation. So you are really capable of seeing the forest and the trees simultaneously. So I, I often can get held up on small details or I, I can zoom really close in. And something I observe of you as a, a manager and a business person is that you have this wonderful capability of simultaneously thinking about what we need to do today, what we need to do this month, and what Third Piece needs to be successful in the next five to ten years. So there's that simultaneous ability to see all of that at once and balance and juggle all of that at once that is giving me like giraffe. Like you can see the entire jungle, but you also have a long neck so you can like go down and like pick out one very specific leaf and like eat that one leaf if you need to. But then once you eat that one leaf, you're back up and you're seeing the whole jungle again. Like we end up with a meerkat, a butterfly, a lion, and a giraffe. Uh, what am I? I that, I'm Pumba. That makes sense. If Kate's the meerkat, I guess I'm just a warthog who's just like durr, durr, durr. For some reason, I'm everybody's favorite, but I don't contribute as much as everybody else. That's Pumba and the Lion King.